Good morning, everyone. How are you? Welcome to a new week of the 2023 Scrappy Sampler. We're really getting close to the end now. We have four blocks left. We'll make three this week, and then next week we'll make the final block and assemble the quilt. So I have the next block that we're working on. It's a foundation paper piecing log cabin. So let's get started. Okay, so to make this block, you're going to have to print the template for my blog. This is free there. You need to download page one and two, and then you need to tape along the seam. My preferred method is always tape, but tape is like the hottest commodity in this house, and my kids have used it all, so I had to use a glue stick. <laughs> we'll see how it works. I think it's going to work fine. I just, I like the security of tape, but um, what I did was I just matched the line up. I taped it down glued it in my case and now I have the block and this whole block up to the dotted lines on each side it's measuring eight and a half inches square. If you want to see a more detailed video on how to cut and put this together flip back to one of the other foundation paper piecing videos. We did a courthouse steps block and I used that method there so you can always refer back to these older videos because they do kind of build on each other as we've gone through this quilt along. I went through my bin and my bin of the fabrics that we're using for this quilt and I pulled out strips. These aren't exactly the right size, but they're starting points. So I did a rainbow. I pulled rainbow colors. And that's going to go on, if you can look here, it's a little hard, but this is shaded and all of these are shaded on this side. So my colored portion is going to get those rainbows and my white portion is going to, I'm going to do all the same color of my background, but you could change that up. You can do it however you like. You could do like a light dark. Um, it's really up to you. So we're starting here at A1 and A2 and I'm just going to flip this over and the foot that I'm using today, it's different than I've used in the past. This is um, let me show it to you. It's 34D. It is the reverse pattern foot with a clear sole. So I really like this foot. I've been using it for other things and I love it. So I'm going to keep using that for this. I think for foundation paper piecing, it's going to be really nice. This red line in front here is in line with the needle. So if I keep that red line in line with the black lines when I'm stitching, I'll have a nice straight line. Also, remember for foundation paper piecing that we... Um, we t turn our stitch length down. I like, and of course I can't remember exactly now. I think I liked the 1.6 last time we did this. It was, I think it was last week. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with one and two. And I'm kind of trying to look through the paper here. This is a little bit tricky. You could use a light block, a light box if you wanted. Um, and again, I definitely have an oversized square here, but this was already cut out. So I figured I'd like to use this rather than, um, just cut an, another random square and the center here I'm making colored but the piece that's titled a1 is actually a white piece so what I'm doing is I'm just making sure I'm gonna have full coverage I think I'm going to but let's just try it out and I don't think anything moved so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down on the line between a1 and a2 and we're gonna sew right on this line in the beginning of this line, I do like to back stitch. Oh, and I don't have my dole feet on. There we go. My dole feet's on now, and I can put my foot back down and stitch here. And the dole feed is a Bernina feature on some of the machines, and I really love it. It's like an extra little foot that comes down here in the back, and it kind of like walks the fabric along so that your top and your bottom move at the same pace. Okay, now I'm gonna trim here to leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can see where I sewed. So this um, will come off. And then uh, this one white piece is too long. So I'm just gonna trim that off and I might be able to use that in something else. And then I'm just gonna fold this back. You could press with the iron here or you could just finger press. And what we're gonna do is add a three next. Now a three, is another, I'm using a background. So I'm, I'm just gonna fold on the line that's A3. And what I'm gonna do is get one of my other pieces here, my other background pieces, put it there, hold it securely while I flip it over, and we're gonna sew on the line between like A1, A2, and A3. And when we come to the edge here, I'm gonna back stitch and then cut it. And we're gonna keep repeating this process. We start in the middle on this block, 
and we work our way out and you just keep doing the same thing over and over as you add each log of this log cabin. So here's what we have now and we're going to go with A4 which is going to be my next colored piece because I'm going to have colored coming up this way and white coming down this way so I'm working on the colored side now and I have a pink for my next one so I'm going to line that up about a quarter inch past my fold. That looks good. I'm going to flip it over and try to hold everything in place and we're going to come down here on the line between it's like a three and a two and then a four. And we're gonna stitch here. And then let's take a look. So I have um, some extra sticking over, which is no problem. We're just gonna fold it in half and trim this off. side and here's what we have right now then okay so we're gonna put this side on next that's gonna be let's see what that's called a5 so I'm folding it on the line here where a5 is this is the line that we're gonna sew on and again I'm creasing this so I know where I need to sew hold on I'll just see if I have a big enough piece I don't hear let me just show you this. I pulled out this orange scrap, and now that I'm looking at it, I don't have a big enough piece because you see that it fits in this square here where A5 is, but I don't have a quarter of an inch on each side. It's like more like an eighth of an inch on each side. So um, if I wanted to be risky, I could use it. If this was the only piece I had of this color, I would use it. Uh, but I have more of this, so I'm going to find a piece that's a little bit bigger, and then we'll sew that piece on. Okay, so I roughly trimmed a bigger piece, and now you can see that I have more than a quarter inch. It's more like um, three-eighths of an inch to a half of an inch on each side, and I'm more comfortable with that. Because if I shift the piece sideways either way, I know I'm going to still have really good coverage. So that looks good to me. Flip this over. And here we'll sew on the line next to A5. And it's okay if you go out. Like my needle just came down into A8. That's fine. If that happens, it's no problem. Some people even like stitching a quarter of an inch beyond each line. I do the back stitching instead. But if you wanted to sew out into another log, that would be okay. Um, really no problem at all. That works too. So let's see what we have. Okay, so now I have to trim here. So I fold my paper back just like we did before to get it out of the way. And then we're trimming here. Okay, these are my scraps. And then let me open this up so you can see. So now we have a really nice center framed with four logs. And we're just going to keep adding logs in the same manner. Same exact way, follow the number sequence all the way out. Okay, I just sewed the last log on and here is what I have. I've been finger pressing along the way. Um, we're going to actually press with an iron now. The glue was fine. It did come apart twice. You can already see it's coming apart. I just found with the glue stick, it's like really rigid. And if you if you bend the paper, one time when I was bending the paper over, it lifted up. So I had to re-glue it twice, but it did work just fine. And now it's held in place by the stitching and it doesn't really matter if it rips now. Um, so let's go over to the iron and we'll press this and trim it then. Okay, so I'm just gonna flip it to the right side and we have the paper on the back. so we're pressing from the front here and really all of the logs should be holding each other into place so the part that needs to be pressed the most is just this outside um, and I don't use steam when I'm pressing these because it can um, distort the paper now that's not too much of a concern right now because we're done sewing so if you really wanted to use steam you could just carefully uh, if you were pressing during the process of making this block I probably wouldn't use steam um, just so that your paper stays the correct shape and then your block turns out the correct shape. But now that we're finished sewing, if you really wanted to use steam, you could. And I'm just pressing to make sure that this outside is going to lay flat. When we flip it over to trim it, you're not going to be looking at the front as you trim it. So you just want to make sure that it's laying nice and flat so that you know when you flip it this way, all the edges are exactly where they're supposed to be. So we'll trim now. 
And now we're ready to trim this down. And it's not gonna be trimmed much because we're pretty close to the edges already. But what we're gonna do is flip it over to the back side, and we're gonna trim on this dotted line, the outer dotted line. And the way I like to do that is I take my ruler. This ruler, I use two different kinds. I love Creative Grids, and I also love Omni Grid. Those are my two favorites. I just so happened to grab this one today. It's got this nice dotted line on two of the sides marking the quarter of an inch so i put that quarter of an inch on the dark line which means that the edge of my ruler is lined up with the dotted and then i just cut then what we're going to do is just pick the block up and rotate it 180 degrees and then we're just going to trim these other two sides so again i'm going to line this up And also at this point, the, um, the left edge and the bottom edge of your block should be lining up with the eight and a half because this is an eight and a half inch square block. Then we just trim that away. And we're left with our to size block. Now, I would like to take the papers out now. You don't have to, you could sew them in and take it out later. I like to take them out now. So the way to do that is just to work from the outside in and you're just kind of tearing on the lines that you sewed on because you, as you did that, as you did the sewing, you perforated the lines. So it's gonna be like tearing on perforated paper and they should just tear right away. And again, I like to work from the outside in because as you do this, you'll free up a whole log every single time. So by tearing away this one, this one, this one, now we get to this log and you just can fold it back and then tear that away. And then as we free that one is gone, now this one's ready. And this is the one that I glued, so it's going to come off in two pieces. A couple pieces, I guess does what it wants right so then you would just fold this back and tear along those new perforations and if you could see there that wasn't a perfect tear you can see so you could take those now just with your fingers get in there if it was too hard for you to do it with your fingers you could do a pair of tweezers and they would come out really easy and then you would just keep going on to the next like one log at a time and just keep working towards the center Okay, so here it is, block 47. Pretty quick, easy, uh, compared to some of the blocks that we did during this quilt along. It's, um, I would say, a beginner foundation paper piecing project because it just uses the square in the middle and then all rectangles. If you have any questions on it though, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. And if not, I'll see you back here tomorrow for the next block. Thank you for following along.